you know, I, I think that it's difficult. I think that th these these requests to sort of like limit yourself and the, the scope of your experience um, in order to satisfy people who will pay you money is a reality for a lot of people. I think that uh, it was it was certainly um, it wasn't my only experience in journalism, but it was an experience that I had, and it's been an experience that I have in, in film and television. Is is this expectation that like there's a very limited perception of what black life looks like, and so we w and we want you to stay within those confines, and so it still happens. But I think that you know I think that the perseverance is is the key for any creative life. I think that there's going to be a lot of rejection along the way. There's going to be a lot of people asking you to do things that you don't want to do for money, and and sometimes you have to do those things for money because when you're first starting out, there isn't a lot of money in in some of these professions. So. Uh, I think that 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 to me is how you rectify it is just or, or or deal with it is just you 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 persevere and you try to push through. I think that you know any any artist who sort of succeeds I think is is you know everybody talks about overnight success but you know the thing that you don't see is the decades of work that goes into goes into sort of like the that life-changing night we'll say. So I think that just perseverance has always been the key for me when it comes to comes to combating those kinds of those kinds of rigid structures. When I read Erasure, I, w I, I felt like it was a gift written specifically for me. Like it felt like somebody sat down to write Cord Jefferson a present. That's how it felt when I was reading the book. It was, there was just so many, um, there was so many instances of overlap between the story and the book and my actual life and my relationship with my siblings and my parents. And, and you know, there, you know, I don't want to spoil anything but there's there was just a lot of there was a lot of overlap in my personal life and and professional life and so a lot of these conversations the book was having I was having with my friends and my family and my colleagues and talking about a lot of these issues and I think that uh so so when I read it it felt like it was I, I just felt so closely related to the material that that adapting it just seemed almost like second nature to me just because it felt it felt like these I've, I've been thinking about these things for decades now um, obviously like there's the great thing about novels is you can have a lot of interiority and there's sort of there's things that don't necessarily translate to film that way that, I mean you know there's there's some big things in the book that I changed for the film because they wouldn't make sense in a movie um, that that you were allowed to do in the book and so I had to cut some of that stuff out but hopefully I, I kept you know, Hopefully, I because I love the book myself, and I and I my biggest fear in making the film was that I was going to do injustice to the story and, and do injustice to the original IP. Um, but hopefully, uh, you know, I, 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 hopefully I captured what was really magical about the book, and also found a way to to make it my own as well. You know, I think that um, I I know that Percival likes the film, and so that to me is is. Um, is one of the most important criticisms that that, that I was going to face, and and so showing him the showing him the film and, and hearing him say that he loved it because it feels like um, its own standalone piece of art and not just sort of uh, a copycat of his book was was um, you know it's amazing. I think that uh, the fact that people were reacting at all is is just a delight. I think that uh, that's one of the beautiful things about being in a movie theater and experiencing performance and, and, and live art with, with other people is just sort of feeling that motion of the crowd and feeling people responding to things that you're not necessarily responding to. And, and when you are responding all together and laughing all at the same time, there's something really magical and special about that. So for me, people, I mean, I never expected this to be a movie that everybody was going to have the same opinion about. I think that part of the part of the point of the film is that these issues are complex and difficult and nuanced and everybody's going to bring their own personal history and experience to to the story. And so I'm very very happy that that um there is maybe people feeling differently about different scenes or different conversations or the movie in general. I think that that to me is uh you know those are my favorite films. Those are my favorite pieces of art are, are ones that I can sit there and talk with my friends about for hours on end about whether or not I agreed with this character's decision or whether I agree with the the themes of the themes of the piece. I think that for me that kind of cultural conversation is is always is always the most fun to me and I'd rather I'd much rather have that than than kind of a a a uh just a general um uh everybody not responding at all and just sitting there silently or all walking out and, and agreeing that that movie was 
just so so. I think that I think that for me, I'd rather I'd rather have people really have really strong opinions and strong reactions to it. That to me is the stuff that I find most exciting when I'm when I'm sitting down to watch something. I knew Jeff. I knew I wanted Jeffrey so early in the process that when I was reading the book, I started reading that the character of Monk in his voice. I started picturing him as I was reading the book. So he was uh, the earliest um, actor that I had in mind. Uh, he was the first person that we went to when the script was done, and I really, um, I really appreciated his support because this is a man who, this is a man who was in Angels in America on Broadway. He was Basquiat. He's been in Batman. He's in 007. He's in these sort of he's in all these Wes Anderson movies. He's working with really sort of the top level talent in the industry, and for him to hear me out and say, "Listen, I've never directed anything." I've never written a film, but I really believe in this, and and I would love for you to be a part of it. For him to take that seriously, and 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 take me seriously, and and be willing to work with me, despite the fact that he could probably go and work with any number of directors that he wanted to, uh, it meant the world to me. And 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 once he joined on, it everything was went so much smoother. It was it was all the pieces fell into place pretty quickly after that because he sort of he basically you know, said like, okay, like I'm, I'm vouching for this person. And so then getting the other actors on board was much easier and getting the financiers to part with a little bit more money was much easier because all of a sudden he sort of, I got this stamp of approval from this kind of legend and this, this one of our greatest living actors. And I feel like very, very fortunate to get the, to get the cast that I got because they're all, I mean, being a first-time director and having to direct people like Jeffrey Wright and Tracy Ellis Ross and Eric Alexander and Sterling K. Brown and Leslie Uggams, who's been doing this forever, to, to get an opportunity to work with all these people, the process went so much more. I mean, it was just so much easier just because you're working with people who are really at the top of their games, and they made they made my life as a director much easier, you know, and I, and I, I'm forever indebted to them for that.